Hi right, everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service Office in San Diego. We continue to get questions about the May gray and June gloom for our coastal areas that have been under cloud cover, which seems to be excessive. Let's talk about that in this video presentation and look at some data. All right, one of the first things we look at is ocean water temperatures across the globe in our region. Two things really stand out. The El Nino situation across the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, it's forming rapidly and spreading towards the west. And that is typical of a developing El Nino or warm phase equatorial ocean. North of that, we see a few things going on too. Persistent warm water south of our active jet stream. That's the jet stream that brought us the significant rain and record snow to California. That was the general path it took there, as shown here. It resulted in cooler than average temperatures along the immediate coast. Now, if we zoom up into Southern California, we can see that uh, water temperatures are actually warming, becoming much warmer than averages to our north. But in the California Bight, they remain average or a little bit below average. We look at the water year, especially the period December through now, we can see that it was cooler than average across the region, not record cold, but some places in Southern California, top 10%. Now for the rainfall on the right-hand side, it was also top 10%. So there's only a few years as wet as what we just experienced. In Central California, record wet between December and now. If you look particularly across our region in California, December through March, the record wet period stands out dark green shaded. There were numerous atmospheric rivers going over the same area in Central California, 13 atmospheric rivers in Southern California. Statewide precipitation, well, the water year has not ended yet. 2023 is the blue line there. And if you look at the ranking, compared to the last 30 year average, it is in the top and it's comparable to the very wet years of 82, 83 uh, and also 1977, 78, which that one happened to be a drought buster in the state. Some positive out of this is that Big Bear Lake rose 11 feet since January. We still have some snowpack in the mountains of Southern California. There is San Gregonio, and we're still getting water running off in the form of snow melt. Now, our mountains not only had significant rain and major snowfall, they were cooler than average, especially during the period December through March. As shown here, Palomar Mountain and Big Bear area we're all top 10 for coolest on average. The San Diego area also has been cooler than average. Look closely at San Diego. We've gone into a trend since last summer, starting in November where we were below average, and now it continues all the way through June. So temperatures, low temperatures and high temperatures continue to run below average in San Diego. If we look at May itself, it wasn't just the marine layer. It was much cooler than average across California coastal areas, but look how warm it was in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, record warm in some places in the deep red. We'll talk about the weather pattern that's causing this. Now in May of 2023, we also were wet, uh, even though most of the rain was light in Southern California. And you can see along the coast in Southern California that stood out as well as parts of the desert Southwest. A little continuation of our active wet winter into May. This image released by NOAA really shows what's going on in Central North America, specifically Canada. Big, large area of red. And in fact, the month of May globally was the second warmest on record. So just because it's been cool in Southwest California and a few other parts, 
the dominant feature is the massive area of above normal temperatures due to the pattern shift that is yet to shift back to something closer to normal this spring. Now the marine layer has been the big story. Here's a satellite imagery on June 1 of very thick marine conditions going all the way up to 5,000 feet. How do we know how high it goes? Well, we can see on satellite here that the terrain, including places like the Cajon Pass, have clouds going all the way up through them. The weather pattern, that's the key to this past winter and what we've been seeing the past couple months. So a recap, the weather pattern that brought us all the rain and snow looked like this when you average December through April. Jet stream taking a dive right through central California. Now uh, notice one thing, the upper level ridge that's been over the Pacific for a couple years and caused our drought years recently, that was firmly in place this winter, but it just shifted, allowing that storm direct to dip into California. What this resulted in, repeated storm after storm, is cooler ocean temperatures along our coast. That can set the stage uh, for a cooler spring. And you can see they got down to as low as 52 degrees in April at La Jolla. Now, the recent weather pattern hasn't really changed a whole lot. We continued to see a dip in that jet stream, much weaker storms in the month of May, but still diving um, along the West Coast and moving across Southern states. Now, if we look at an average of May through June, we can see a couple things that really stand out. A development of an upper level ridge, not in the Pacific, that one weakened significantly, but over central Canada. Uh, and in between that is a weak storm track that just keeps lingering. And it's also resulting in severe weather across the deep south. You can see it cutting across California and then going across Texas. Now, what this has resulted in is what you're seeing outside if you live on the coast, a persistent and prolonged marine layer. When we do get sunshine, it has been really nice break, um, especially when we get it in the afternoon hours when the sun is high. So take a look at some of these numbers. So if you look at the past winter months, mm -hmm. we're running above average on partly cloudy days. That was really noticeable. So in between all the rain events, we had a lot of partly cloudy days. But what's been really noticeable in May and June is the cloudy days. The days with about 80% or more cloud cover, 20 of them in May, already 12 in June, and we're only halfway through. So the temperatures have been affected as well. You can see February and March were really cool in San Diego because of the weather pattern and the storms but the coolness has continued with just this persistent cloud cover and the storm track still over us. You can compare it to averages. So for example, in June, we averaged nine cloudy days and we already have 12, okay? So really we've started off June even worse than what we started off the month of May. Our sea surface temperatures have really dipped too as a result. Right now, uh, when you look at the past 10 years, you can see that ocean temperatures are averaging the low 60s along La Jolla and Scripps Pier, and that's the coldest in the past 10 years as shown here. Okay, what else has been going on? Uh, there's been a lot of discussion, rightfully so, about the wildfires in Canada. Here's a map showing those wildfires from Western Canada, British Columbia, all the way to Nova Scotia. Uh, and if you notice in the United States, there's been very few wildfires so far. And this is certainly a reflection of the storm tracker jet stream that's been reverted as shown in prior slides, much further south than it should be. If you look at the active fires in Canada, the red dots show them here, still ongoing as of June 16th. Now, at one point earlier in June, thick, heavy smoke was coming down directly out of Canada, and it was following the wind flow from a storm system in Northeast United States, as shown here. 
All right, what is the outlook? Are we going to get out of this cool, cloudy weather pattern that's been dominating? Well, in the short term, it doesn't look likely. Middle part to latter part of June, below average temperatures expected in most of California, not just the coast, but even in the mountains because of the storm track and wetter conditions across northern California. Note the really warm conditions in the heart of the United States into the Northeast continuing and wetter than average in the very stormy part of Southeast United States recently. Okay, for late June, it looks like the weather pattern still will be persisting with that stubborn jet stream driving weaker storms across the West Coast. So below average temperatures even for late June as we end this month. There is some hope here in the forecast later in the period, early to mid July. Now, right now the forecast is for average conditions, but that would be an improvement temperature wise. So this possibility that the jet stream will start to retreat a little further north where it should be into the Northern Rockies. And then that will allow more upper ridging and heating from the desert floor and the high sun angle, which will eventually develop a monsoonal flow in July. But first things first, it looks like at least a slight shift starts to develop as we go into July.